What? What? <clears throat> stop. Just stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Hola, Tube Nation. We are back. We are back. The day has finally arrived. Sure, we're like three months late, but we're here. <laughs> <clears throat> It is finally time for me to show you guys my experience in Peru. But first of all, I look so sophisticated right now. I have like a turtleneck on. I look like a middle school guidance counselor. I'm also trying to give off the vibes that like I'm cultured now. I know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, anyway, I'm really excited to show you guys this video. This was truly a life-changing experience for me. Like I got to visit one of the seven wonders of the world. And not only did I just experience that, but I experienced that with my best friend and her family who lives in Peru. And I just feel like I got the true authentic Peruvian experience all around so educational for me and just so mind blowing. And it was really cool to learn more about Christelle's culture and getting to know her family more. It was just so fun. I'm excited to get into it. I'm excited to get into it. So this is gonna be a long one. I would suggest pausing this video, grabbing a snack, grabbing a beverage. Make yourself comfortable. We're having a slumber party even even though it looks like I'm about to call you into my office with some bad news about your geometry test, I don't care. And since this is a literal movie and it's two hours long, I'm gonna do a part two next week on the 31st, okay? So mark your calendars. It's already done, it's edited, so. There's just so much that happened, you guys. But before we get started, today's video is sponsored by Care Of. So it's a new year. I have some New Year's resolutions and one of them is just to remember to take my vitamins and actually hold myself accountable to do so because I always forget. Or I take my vitamins for like a few days and then I just stop. I I don't know why i just get lazy but that's why i love care of because it makes it so simple and what is care of you ask care of takes care of you care of offers a curated set of products that are designed to work with research backed ingredients and optimal doses and they also have an app that allows you to track how you're feeling and play back insights about your results over time so you can adjust your routine as your needs change and it was truly so simple all i had to do was go on their website take a quiz talk about my health goals like for for me, I wanted to manage my stress, but then also I wanted to manage my energy levels. Also, I wanted to get something for gut health and immune health. They sent me this little box and a little piece of paper like this. It says my name, hello Sarah. It tells me all of the things that they put in this box. And basically it's like a little dispenser and all of the vitamins that I should be taking that morning is just in a little pack, all of them. And I just put it right by my bed on my bedside table. All I have to do is just reach over when I wake up and grab one and then I'm good. And it's easy to take when you're traveling too. It's just I'm really stoked about the probiotic blend that I have and also the B complex and the rhodiola. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Rhodiola? I don't know, but that one helps my stress and mood and I can truly feel a difference. So you guys should take care of quiz too and figure out what's recommended for you. That run. Click the link in the description and use my code Sarah Basca for 50% off of your first order. Also, here's a QR code that you can scan if you just want to be sent there immediately. Here you go. Thank you so much, Carob, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into it. Okay, so the preparation for this trip was very last minute. And Christelle told me that we were gonna do some hiking, but I didn't know how much hiking we were gonna do. I didn't know how intense it was gonna be, but she told me to go buy some hiking boots. So I'm like, okay, I can do that. I went to this store called Backcountry and I walked in and it was so overwhelming. It was just like this hiking camping store. I was in the store for like 15 minutes, just pacing back and forth <laughs> in front of the hiking boot selection because I was so overwhelmed. I did not know which boots were correct. I was too scared to talk to an employee because I didn't want to sound like an idiot. Finally, this sweet man named Dan came up to me and he was like, hey, do you need some help? And I'm like, yeah. I'm hiking Machu Picchu, question mark? He was like, oh my God. And I was like, I know Dan, help me. And then he pulled these ones out and these were so cute. I felt like these would match my outfits really well. Don't see a brand name, but it says DQ, Dairy Queen. It's not the Dairy Queen brand. Oh, I think it's called Cloud Tech. Yeah, Cloud Tech. These saved my life. Shout out Dan for inspiring me to get these ones. They were also the most expensive ones. So I was like, are you just trying to scam me? 
but no i really love these and i wear these all the time actually they're very comfortable anyway so i'm getting prepared the night before and then we head on over to lax and we have a red eye flight so we're gonna be flying throughout the entire night while we were on our way to the airport i it was all hitting me i was getting a little bit nervous because i know christelle's dad we've hung out a few times he's amazing but like i've never hung out with him for a long extended period of time we've never traveled the world together i was just nervous because i'm like oh my god is he gonna like me i don't know you know how that is i'm going on a trip to his home country and we're about to meet up with his family over there so and i'm just like this white girl i don't even know spanish and that's another thing i don't know spanish which is really unfortunate. So we got to the airport and then Christelle's dad meets up with us. We check in, we get to our gate. We all just had the best conversation right before our flight, just the three of us. We were sitting back drinking a beer and he was just getting very vulnerable about his life. So was I, so was Christelle. And it was such a great bonding moment. And while that was happening, I was like, okay, all of my nerves just went away. Oh my God, okay, this is gonna be really good. Like Sammy is so much fun. So then we finally get on our flight. Subtube Nation. <laughs> it's Tube Nation. Oh, sorry. What's up, Tube Nation? We're going to Peru, bitch. We just boarded the plane. Why don't like, we show your dad? Daddy, say hi to the camera. <laughs> it's Crystal. <bad. laughs> I am running on like 40 hours of sleep. Or no sleep. No sleep. <laughs> I wish I was running on 40 hours of sleep. I got my eyelashes done so I don't have to worry about doing my makeup. I got trapped with my DoorDash driver today in a garage. <laughs> More on that later. So yeah, we have how long? Eight hours? It's gonna be shorter than that because we're stopping in Panama City. It's five, six hours. Oh, you're right. And then it'll be like another two, three hours to Peru. Oh my God, then I can get a neck pillow. There you go. Uh, we'll have an hour layover. I forgot a neck pillow, guys. That was like the last thing on my list. I thought you had one. Oh, I did. Mm. I have many. I have maybe them every single time <laughs> yeah. you go to the airport. I have like six in my closet. Totally. I just keep forgetting to bring them. Okay, bye guys. Bye. I'm so tired. Thought we were gonna get some sleep. No, we did not. Not a wink of it. Not a wink of it. It was a long, it was, it was a long flight. We get our luggage and then Christelle's uncle picked us up. He was right on time. I've never met him before, so I, I didn't know what to expect. When we walked outside of the airport waiting for him, he was already right there and he ran up to us and made a joke in Spanish, allegedly. I don't remember what the joke was, but I just remember Sammy and Christelle giggling really hard and I was like, <laughs> like giggling with them. I was like, okay, Christelle's uncle is funny. I don't know what he said, but it was funny. He's a fun time. And that immediately like made me feel really good. I was like, okay. Christelle has a fun uncle. A funkle, if you will. <laughs> Sammy went up to greet him and then Christelle went to greet him and then I went to greet him and then he kissed me on the cheek. But I didn't know, I guess, a part of that culture, you're supposed to kiss them on the cheek back as just a sign of respect. It's just a natural greeting there, you know? I didn't know that. And so while we were walking to his car, Sammy pulled me aside and he goes, Hey Sarah, I know you didn't know this, but just so you know, from here on out, whenever you greet someone, kiss them on the cheek here. That's just normal. And if you don't do that, it's like, oh my God, why didn't they kiss me on the cheek? And I was like, oh my God, Sammy, totally. Thank you for telling me that. I'm like, Sammy, you must be telling me all of this stuff throughout the trip because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I am. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Just please tell me everything like that. He was like, I got you. It was great. I was like, okay, now I know. And then we got an uncle's car. So much baggage. <laughs> Look at all this baggage. <laughs> Bring all this baggage to Peru. 
Sorry guys. We're about to unpack this. <laughs> <laughs> we have no choice but to unpack this baggage. <laughs> and then we had to drive like an hour. Once we got into town, he like pulls into this little restaurant place. He looks at Sammy and he goes, let's go in, in Spanish. He told us to stay in the car, so we were like, okay. And I was like, what are we doing? And Christelle's like, oh my God, he's getting us the best chicken in Peru. Craving chicken, dude. I didn't even say that out loud, but I was like, oh my God, if I just had some chicken, if I just got my mouth on some chicken right now, all of my problems would be solved. And then he pulls into a chicken spot and it's the best chicken in Peru. And Christelle told me to say it. She was gonna be in this video, but she's really sick. Um, but she told me to tell y'all that it was pollo a la brasa. It's great chicken. That's what that means. Great chicken. <laughs> And then we drive to, I'm gonna call him Funkle, Fun Uncle. We drove to Funkle's house and his house was gorgeous. His wife, AKA Christelle's aunt was so sweet, even though she didn't speak English, I didn't speak Spanish. There was a barrier there, but they were vibes, you know? We were communicating through our eyes the whole time. When she went to greet me, I gave her a hug and then we went and kissed each other on the cheek like Sammy told me to do. And I just remember like when I was done doing that, I was like, wait, yes. I'm doing good. That was good, Sarah. That was good. And then we all just sat around the table and just ate our chicken, our, sorry, pollo a la brasa. And it was so good. Oh my God, it was, it was, <laughs> I'm like, giggling about it. It was the, it was the best chicken I've ever had. And Christelle's aunt and uncle were just so accommodating and just so sweet. They showed us around the house. They showed us where we were staying and we were staying upstairs and we had this whole entire story to ourselves. Obviously I didn't record that. That's their privacy. That's their home. I'm not just gonna like be like, you know, house tour but it was heaven. Let's go. This is about to be such a great trip. Her family is so nice. Although I can't speak to them directly, the vibes are great. And then that night, the first night, since we were so tired and just drained, we just stayed in and we watched the season premiere of Golden Bachelor and it was exquisite. It was a dream. Like we're just in her family's house in Peru, experiencing the Golden Bachelor for the first time. Like the wholesomeness, the beauty of it all. And then the second day we got up, got dressed, got ready. And then her family took us out to another restaurant for lunch and we just got more chicken. Honestly, I love Peru. Their food was top notch. I was just ready to try it all. I was really open and we got some Peruvian fried rice. Oh, so good. You, 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 you. <laughs> we were just having family time in Spanish. But Sammy was translating for me most of the time. And Sammy was also just like explaining to me more about the food while we were there. And I was just getting educated on just like everything food wise. And while we were there and while I was talking to Sammy, the Funko looks at Sammy and goes, has she ever tried chicha morada? And I was like, no, I haven't. And they were like, do you want to try it? And I was like, give it to me. Give me the chicha morada. I don't know what that means. Sure, I have some food allergies, but it can wait. It can wait, bring it on. What is what is chicha morada? And y'all, oh my God. All of a sudden this like big jar of, it looks like, it looks like a prune juice. It's a very dark juice and it comes out in like this big glass thing. He pours me a cup of it and he goes, just try it. And I was like, okay, no expectations, open mind. In that moment, I grew wings. It was so good. It was so good. My palate was freaking out. My taste buds were jumping around. It was the scene in SpongeBob where he's trying to find the name in the file cabinets. My taste buds just didn't know what was happening. Sammy explained to me what I was tasting. The base ingredient of chicha morada is corn coli. 
I don't know if I'm saying that right. Known commonly as purple corn, which is abundantly grown and harvested along the Andes Mountains. It's a purple corn drink, but it was so refreshing. It, it was like sweet. I don't even know, but I loved it. Could not get enough of it. Sorry, I wrote notes because there's just so much on this trip. Then we went to this little shopping center in Miraflores, which is a city in Peru and it's right by the ocean. And it's so beautiful. The center that we went to, it was kind of like an outside mall. Loose. Baby, come hop in the back of the whip and we do what it do. Rain on too. <laughs> Also, that song that we were singing, it's called Loose Screws. <laughs> And we could not get that song out of our head this entire trip. We saw it on this random Sterniolo triplets TikTok. Like they were just like lip syncing to it and we could not stop singing it. It was embedded into our brains. So you're going to be hearing us sing that song constantly. We don't even know why. We don't even know why. <laughs> we don't even know why. <laughs> You must be joking. It's so friggin' gritty right now, dude. I love this area so much. I love oh. this song. It's like we're at the Grove. Oh, hello. Hola. It's my uncle. Uncle. Dio. Mira. My nephew. Oh, nephew. Niece. <laughs> Niece. <laughs> Niece. Cousin? No. Niece. Niece. Yo soy tu niece. There's a TGI Fridays. Where? Daddy, Daddy, come here. Say hi to the vlog. Say hi. Oh, hi. How you doing? Welcome to Alarco Mars. My dad's on barricade for the sunset. That's us meeting up with Caitlin. <laughs> That's Caitlin. Oh, yeah. oh my god, look at us. We're so cute. You daddy? Is your screw on loose? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Are you a moto mommy? I know. <laughs> my screw's on loose. My screw's on loose. My screw's on loose. <laughs> 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 screw's on loose. Baby, come hop in the back of the whip and we do it. And then y'all, we got into the car after shopping around. We wanted to go drive to this little different location for dinner. <laughs> and while we were driving to dinner, this guy next to us on the road would not let us merge, okay? And Christelle's uncle is driving. Sammy, her dad is in the passenger. Me, Christelle, and her auntie are in the back seat, right? And uncle needs to get over. But this guy next to us is just being a lunatic, being awful, and just won't let us merge over and we have to get over to make our exit so uncle honks his horn sammy's got his head out the window being like let us over just let us over you're just being a dick and then the guy next to us rolls down his window they're speaking in spanish i guess what this guy was saying was like really brutal that's what christelle said she didn't translate it to me fully but she was like it was like pretty messed up and i was like totally but this guy was screaming at christelle's dad outside of his car and then christelle's dad was like what what and then this guy pulls up Get super close this far away from hitting our car. On purpose, gets super close, takes his hand and smacks our side mirror. He completely took his hand, smacked it. And then he tried to like drive away, but since we were so close and we were in traffic, he like couldn't get that far away. And then Christelle's dad goes, oh. Christelle's uncle is all riled up. He goes, oh, that's my car. That's my car. Don't do that to my car. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? And me, Christelle, and the aunt are in the back seat like, uh, 
And Christelle's like, Daddy, stop! Because we thought that someone was gonna get hurt. Like, this was such a heated situation. I was like, oh my God, I love Peru. This is lit. This is, this is crazy. Like, what's gonna happen? I want Christelle's dad to be safe, but what's gonna happen? So then Christelle's dad's got his like head out the window, just yelling at this guy, as he should. Uncle is also yelling and honking and honking and honking. Other guy in the other car is honking and honking and yelling. And then what does Christelle's dad do when he realizes that they're just going to be stuck next to each other for a while? Because <laughs> we were in traffic. <laughs> this guy just slapped our mirror and there's no way for either of us to do anything. They're not going to get out and fight each other. So what does, what does Sammy do to win the fight? He sticks his head out the window again and starts barking at this dude. He starts barking at this man in the most realistic way. Sounded exactly like a dog. Just starts barking at him. And then the uncle leans over on the other side of Sammy and also starts barking. So they are just both simultaneously barking at this man next to us. And me, Christelle, and the aunt in the back seat, we were losing our minds. They were barking so ferociously where the guy next to us thought it was so weird. <laughs> that he was like, oh my God, they're so weird. He let us merge. He was like, okay, y'all just go. This is. This is too much. I can't deal with that. Why are they barking at me? Are they okay? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the laughter. <laughs> That was such a hoot. I was like, I love these guys. I totally get it. I would have barked at them too. And honestly, in that moment, I felt so safe. I was like, Christelle's dad and her uncle, they got it. They got it handled. If anything, they're gonna bark at someone for us. It was awesome. Second night there, it's nighttime now. We just had a fabulous day. Vibes are great. I'm in Peru. By the Spaniels. Uh, oh, and, uh, wow. It was uh, built It's their every... Statue of Liberty. Oh. <laughs> it was built in every single square Look at his every butt. little town. Oh, oh yeah. I know. He's got a dong. He's got a dong. He's got a dong. Got a dong. <laughs> Shake that lap, baby. He's being so disrespectful. <laughs> oh, shit. I made the joke I'm Peruvian and I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> that man has got a dong. <laughs> Uh, my screws on loose. I don't know the lyrics at all. <laughs> We're gonna walk across the street. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. My screws on loose. Baby's gonna hop in the bag of the whip and we do it as you. <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> Her screws on loose. <laughs> we out here in, where are we at? Barranco, right? Barranco. Barranco. Right here in Barranco. Barranco. Oh, We're across the street, guys. <laughs> We are so crazy out here, but uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Got, um, is that Mary? Yeah, I think. Yeah, That's Mary, right? Yeah, Mary. She's looking like a baddie. Her screws are not on loose. <laughs> I'll lose them for them. <laughs> oh my god. That's crazy. That is crazy. Uh, Say sorry. sorry Lo siento. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that was right. You would know more than me. Lo siento. Mary. Lo siento e Mary. <laughs> e Mary? What the fuck? Like, and Mary. I'm sorry. And Mary. <laughs> Lo siento. <laughs> Lo siento e Mary. Why e? I'm Why? saying sorry to the camera and sorry to Mary. Oh, Lo siento and to. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Duh. Totally. So this is. Who's that? This is a uh, something you need to know. Okay. This lady, her name was Chabuca Granda. Chabuca Granda. The greatest composer and musician for a specific uh, music, the Peruvian music. Slay. For the balls and uh, the whole concept <laughs> of the Peruvian music. This is so funny to me. Can you 
Really? And she passed away already. Oh no. She's very famous. She's so pretty. Is that your concept? Of yeah. Oh, that Peruvian music. Come on, woman okay. supremacy. She should be on a money. <laughs> she should be on a money. I just look at it in, a, in, in a Google and just a C for Chabuca Granda. That was the greatest one. Oh my god. She's so correct. She should be on a billete. 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 There we go. She should be on a billete. Yeah, period. Do you think she would like loose screws? <laughs> we, <laughs> oh my god, her outfit's so cute. It's like her screws on loose. This is houses from the back to the 80s, 80, 800s. The 800s? Yeah. He's a slow reader. That's what I'm perceiving. <laughs> He's a slow reader. <laughs> That's how you interpret it. That. <laughs> it's probably such a way deeper meaning. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's literally nice. I don't know, it smells or not? Ah, yes. Oh. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you, okay you, get, you gotta smell it. I can barely smell it. Oh, I smell it. That smells great. Yeah. I love that. Oh, wait, now I smell it. <laughs> <laughs> it smells so good. Look at how cute. Oh, this restaurant and we're looking at the menu and Christelle goes do you want a pisco sour and I was like what's a pisco sour and then her family collectively they were like <gasps> get her a pisco sour and Christelle's like okay I'm getting her a pisco and I was like what's a pisco sour Christelle was like dad you have to also get one too like the three of us just need to drink one because Ann and uncle are like no pisco sour for me I was just like oh they know something that I don't know and that's fun I want to figure it out and then the waitress she comes back with these giant glasses literally jumbo glasses like the size of my head and I just had no idea what it was so it's like a fermented Peruvian grape cocktail. Me, Christelle, and her father got so hammered at this restaurant. It was ridiculous, but it was so fun. One of the dishes in Peru that's very poppin', it's called anticucho. Let me make sure I said that right. Anticucho. And that is cow heart. And, you know, when I first heard that, I was, you know, I was a little bit like, oh! but not in a disrespectful way. You know what I'm saying? Cow heart. Totally. I'm really open to that. <laughs> My heart is saying let's do it. Luckily the anticucho was served not looking like an actual heart. So it was easier for me to kind of like, just like digest the meat in a chill way. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that that doesn't sound disrespectful because I'm really not trying to be. I've just never been around a cow's heart before. So I was like, oh, okay, we're doing this. I took one bite. Anticucho, yeah. Isn't that fucking good? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. And there's history behind everything, guys. I feel like the history is really interesting. I'm just gonna read you some. During the 16th century, the Incas, okay, back up the bus. Do y'all even know who the Incas are? Probably not. The Incas, 
the Incas. We love the Incas. I'm a fan girl. They are remembered for their contributions to religion, architecture, and their famous network of roads throughout the region. The Incas also built Machu Picchu. They were incredible architects. I'll go more into detail about the Incas later, but just know for now that in Peru, the Incas, those were those guys, you know? They were those guys. They did the damn thing. During the 16th century, the Incas inhabited Peru and liked to eat meat on sticks. So yeah, basically the Incas love this stuff and so do I. Whatever the Incas like, I like, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> And honestly, dude, I genuinely did like it. Auntie Cucho, I did like it. And me, Christelle, and her dad were very lit off of the Pisco Sours. <laughs> Myself up, moving on to the better. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Ain't no errors, baby. It's a new era. I wake up early, feeling rich like I'm Kesha. I get to the paper, boy. Extra, extra, extra. Fuck with me, you know that I got it. Come with me, let's take a trip to the islands. We up on the jet, we'll do more than just fly on it. Stand on that hill, you gon' die on it. Boom, boom. Okay, fuck you guys. <laughs> but you wanna see my butt? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna see my butt? I'm a twonk. Come on, Sammy. Aww. Cute. Wow, that's so pretty. Yeah. Oh my god, us. <laughs> <laughs> So us. And then after that, it was getting pretty late, so we just headed back home. Mama, Did you know that he had like multiple layers of teeth? Or didn't know that until like two weeks ago. <laughs> Ooh, sing it, Dad. <laughs> The man's got a hooch, got a hooch. Thunderbolts are flying. Very, very frightening. Alfiera Bueno, el maquetista de Paraguay. Lea, no me quiero vender. Sí, pero a mí me. Once we got home, we were still like pretty lit off the Pisco Sours, but Sammy looks at us and goes, all right, girls, great day. That was so fun, good times. But tomorrow, you guys need to get your shit together because we have a flight tomorrow. We're flying to Cusco. We're gonna be staying in Cusco for six days and you cannot bring your giant luggage that you brought. You have to bring six days worth of clothes, toiletries, makeup, whatever, in one backpack. <laughs> Good luck. Get to packing, okay? And me and Christelle are like, so how are we gonna do that? We were like, okay, let's just deal with that tomorrow. Let's go to sleep because our flight wasn't until like later that day. So we wake up the next day and Cusco is basically the town that everybody goes to if they're trying to go to Machu Picchu, right? It's like the town right next to it. Let me just give you guys like a definition so I don't sound super ignorant. Cusco, a city in the Peruvian Andes, was once capital of the Inca Empire. Remember I was talking about the Incas? and is now known for its archaeological remains and Spanish colonial architecture. And Cusco is really high up in the Andes, and since it's the capital of the Inca Empire, it's like a very important center of the indigenous people in Peru. 
since the 13th century. It went from the 13th century to 1532. There's just so, so much culture there. And that's why we spent the majority of our trip in Cusco. I was so excited to go to Cusco, knowing that Cusco was like the llama capital. Just ever since I was a young girl, I've just loved and gravitated towards llamas. I just respected them so much. I just thought that they were iconic in so many ways. Just the fact that when they get really annoyed with you, they just spit in your face. Like they just have these boundaries or they're just like, I'm done talking. And then they walk away. I think that that's so admirable. I did my third grade report on llamas. Alpaca fur is exquisite. I just know that llamas are just a very respectable animal in different cultures and different countries. And I've always known that since I was little. I was so excited. And we are about to start our Cusco adventure. <laughs> This part of the video is where everything changes. Once we landed, Sammy and Uncle were like, Sarah, you're, you might feel a little weird. And Christelle was like, yeah, you might feel a little bit off. And I was like, Okay, I doubt it, but okay. And we get off the plane and we're walking into the airport, the Cusco airport. And I feel it was like this weird dizziness. It almost felt like I just got off like a ride, like a spinny ride at the fair. My equilibrium was just off, but it was very mute. I wasn't even that dizzy. It was just strange. And then Sammy and her uncle were reassuring me being like, yeah, you're just getting adjusted to the altitude. And I was like, okay, so it really is that serious. Cause I, I'm definitely feeling something. I felt high almost. With only around 13% of oxygen in the air, this can make it substantially more difficult to breathe. And Cusco was located at an altitude of 11,200 feet. We got into a car and then we drove to our hostel. Y'all, I don't even, I don't know if this is TMI. It might be, but I just want to give y'all my authentic experience in Peru, okay? Because this was a very crucial part of my experience. And if this is TMI or like gross or weird to you, get over it. So basically, <laughs> I don't know why, but like whenever I travel, I like get constipated really bad for the first few days, but then it's usually fine. And then I'm back to normal. At this point, <laughs> when I got to Cusco, I was three days. No, no, I was four days. I was four days. And so I was like a little bit anxious about that, but I was like really, I was really not trying to let that bring me down or alter my experience. Cause I'm like, I'm good. It's gonna happen. Like this isn't like an emergency. This isn't like a medical issue because it's going to happen. And this happens whenever I travel anywhere. But then I got to Cusco already constipated in general, but because of the altitude change, my body was so confused. My body did not know what to do with itself. So we get to our hostel and our hostels were really, really nice. And I'm just really glad that me and Christelle had a separate room from her dad and her uncle, Like, but we were right next to each other, you know? Since we got there super late at night, we just went and checked into our hostel and just kind of called it a night got some sleep. I was really hoping that my body would send a signal being like, hey girl, we're going and we're flowing, but I wasn't getting anything. I tried, nothing. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go to bed. I didn't even tell Christelle yet. I was just so embarrassed. I was like, nope. And we had to wake up super early. We had to wake up at like six. I woke up at three to the most excruciating pain in my stomach. I can't even describe this pain. It was way worse than period cramps. It was just like this long, just like deep, deep, deep guttural pain. And it would last for like 20 seconds. And I just woke up in the middle of the night, just like holding my stomach, just like trying not to make a noise because the walls were super, super thin. Dad and her uncle were right next to me. And I was so confused. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, is this because I've been constipated? Okay, I hear you. I like feel you, but let's do something about it. 
And so then I would try to go to the bathroom and nothing. It would go away, go back to sleep. And that only happened once that night. We woke up at six in the morning a few hours later and I was like, Christelle, like I just experienced the worst pain of my fucking life. She was like, damn dude, your body's just really adjusting to the altitude right now. And she was like, are you constipated? <sighs> now that you mention it, um, yeah, I am. And she was like, oh, okay, just like a few days. I don't, a few, I don't know how you would, I don't know what a few is to you. And she was like, girl, how many days? And I was like, it's been five days. This is day five. And she was like, oh my God, okay. Your body is tweaking. And she was like, Sarah, this could be actually kind of a serious situation. Do you mind if I like let my dad know? And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, I was like, let's just like not for now. In my head, I was like, I just really don't want to be an inconvenience. Like this is just so embarrassing. We just got to Cusco. Sammy and her uncle are just so excited to be here and just go on all of these tours and just like take us around. I don't want them to have to worry about me and my bowel movements. I want them to enjoy their day. And she was like, okay, let's just, let's see how you feel. And if you get that stomach pain again, I have to tell my dad. And I was like, okay, all right deal but it's not gonna happen again so then we get ready it's our first day in Cusco I'm feeling good I'm feeling normal a little bit traumatized from the pain that I experienced that night but not thinking about it I'm having a great day and I can't remember exactly what this place was oh, even though we had a whole tour about it it was one of the Incas spots you know that was cool that was like my first introduction to the Incas and like who they were like this is when I really got to learn about them for the first time I was very intrigued. No pain. Wow. <laughs> All like the, those like lines you see is like where they did their agriculture. Oh. And then where we're standing is where they did like the rituals. And then the Spaniards went over there and tore, tore down all of their temples to make their Catholic churches. Oh. Womp womp. Awesome. So, <laughs> so where we're standing is where the... This is where they'd have their like big ceremonies. Oh. Dude, a donkey. Oh my, eyes. oh my god, hi donkey. Oh, there's two. Donkey. Where? There's another one right next to it. We snaw. We snaw. We snaw. Oh my god, there's so many! Oh my god. I wanna stop here. <laughs> After that, we went to the salt mines of Maras. I don't know if I'm saying that right. The Maras salt mines are more than 6,000 salt ponds. 6,000 of them. 6,000 salt ponds carved by the Incas. Like I said, the Incas were just those bitches. The Incas just, ugh. These have been in operation for over 500 years in the middle of, oh my gosh, Kori Pu. Oh, uh, mountain slopes, sacred valley of the Incas, and they are still mined by local families. These amazing constructions continue to provide the country and beyond with its pink salt, which has been recommended by experts as a healthy option to flavor meals due to its curative properties. The salt ponds were built in AD 200 to AD 900. I don't even know what that means. That was a really incredible sight to see. I just can't believe the Incas built that also. I was just so impressed. I was like, who are these Incas? And how do I meet them? I want their autograph. They're just so smart. Who are these guys? I sound so ignorant, but truly I was like, these guys know what's up. So after the salt mines, we got back into our little bus. <laughs> We go to this other iconic site. Cannot remember what this was. I'm pretty sure it was for the agriculture in some form, but it was really cool. It was like a giant spiral, like perfectly symmetrical, just like this beautiful shape, just beautiful geometry. And this was also done by the Incas. I'm pretty sure this was an agriculture thing, but we got off the bus to go look at this and I'm taking a video of it. I'm like super impressed by it. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Feeling fine. Our tour guide was like speaking 
to all of us and kind of explaining the history, but since it was all in Spanish, Sammy came up to me and tried to translate. I'm standing there listening to Sammy and I'm like really interested. I'm there, I'm present. You guys, I'm not even kidding. In the middle, of, oh my god, him just educating me and just giving me the info and just translating everything for me. So I'm just getting out. Mm -hmm. Those are the stairs. Oh. In the middle of that, I feel it. It felt just like a sword went right through me. And then it was just like twisting. Oh. When it hit me out of nowhere, I have, I would never, ever, ever disrespect Christelle's dad. I would never cut him off mid-sentence while he's speaking, but I had no choice. I literally just grabbed my stomach and started like, not screaming, but I was like, ah! And he was like, what? And I was like, sorry, one sec. And I just like walked to this little building that was right next to us. And I just like crouched down and I'm trying not to scream, you guys. Like it was the sharpest pain I have ever felt and it would not stop. And it was so bad that I started crying. Hey, what? I am not the type of person to cause attention to myself in these environments, especially when I'm in my best friend's family's country where they're like trying to show me their culture. I would never want to make it about me. It was so bad, y'all. And this is when Christelle like told her dad about me being constipated for five days. <laughs> how I had this happen to me in the middle of the night. And apparently her dad was like, oh, okay, I get it. Her dad knows what I was going through. My body has never been so high up before. So Christelle like came and she was like there for me. And I was like crying being like, dude, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do right now. Um, but then it went away completely after 30 seconds. Like I was fine. After that was over, I was like, okay back but that kept happening sporadically just all day the tour bus we would be in there for hours sometimes because we had to get to each location and sometimes the locations were far away the sharp pains would happen on the tour bus it feels like this is like a consistent pattern so i started timing them like they were contractions dude it was so weird and we came to the conclusion that the contractions would happen every 43 to 44 minutes. They would last for 20 to 30 seconds each. Just kept timing them all day just so I could be able to look at my phone and know when that pain was coming. Okay, her dad is telling me something right now. I can like get away from this conversation and cry really quick. <laughs> and then just come back and pretend like that didn't happen. Like, but I was just so happy that I just knew when it was coming. Hey, y'all. Where are we? What is this called? Where are we? <laughs> He's talking to people. Um, I forget what it's called. We've been to literally 27 places today. Yeah. So our tour started at 6 in the morning, or 6.40. 6.40. And it's what? It's 2.13. 2 2.13. We still have another two hours of this tour. But it's really sick. Speaking <laughs> of, we have 15 minutes to go all the way back down. Wait, we just walked all these steps. Do you see that? Um, we just have 15 all steps. We started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team here. <laughs> Oxygen. <laughs> okay, this is pure, pure, pure water coming from the, up the, from the mountain, from the, from the ice. It's not that cold. Well, this is coming all the way up here. That's crazy. Wait, Sammy, th this is coming from there? No, it's uh, right behind up, all the way oh. up in the mountain. It's far from here. Oh, wow. It's coming all that from there. Wow. Coming through the river. And oh, yeah. Just the water. She's waving it. So after that long day of pain, we checked into a new hostel in Cusco.
And all I wanted to do was just like lie down and just chill and just try to rest because the pain was just so bad. I kept trying to go to the bathroom. Nothing was working. Oh my God. <laughs> Laying down. Dude, this rocks. This rocks. I really didn't think I was going to make it. But you did it, girl. I did. When we were seeing the... Um, yeah, the agriculture thing. Yeah, and that cramp was so bad, I started crying. I know, I saw. I felt so bad. I was like, you. I don't know if I can... I, I was like gonna say, like, you can stay in the car. Sorry if my feet stink. I don't know if it's no, you or me. It's me. Okay. I think. I mean, it doesn't stink, it just smells sweaty. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> it's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was getting so many dirty looks. Or not like dirty looks, but people were like looking at my feet being like, what? You're like, if you would, if you could see the blisters. Yeah. <laughs> Walk a mile in these Louboutins. <laughs> these Louboutins. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. I need them to give me the Wi-Fi password. Immediately. 15 minutes ago. A yup. A yup. A yup. I love laying down. <laughs> this bed is... A rock. rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least it's a surface where yeah. we can lay down. No. Oh, look at the backpacks that we got. There's a llama on it. Also, I figured out today that the Emperor's New Groove, that show on Disney, it's about Peru. The Peruvian Empire. <laughs> How often do you think about the Peruvian Empire? All the time. <laughs> my dad. That, I would say, I think about, like, every other week. Really? Like, the Incans. Oh, yeah. Well, now I am. Yeah. I'm just feeling so vulnerable right now. I'm in a different country. I'm with Christelle's dad and uncle. I don't know how to go about this situation. So we meet up with Christelle's dad and her uncle so we can all walk to dinner, right? Christelle's dad's like, how you doing? And I'm like, not well, Sammy. I'm kind of freaking out because the next day we're all going to Machu Picchu. We're hiking Machu Picchu the next day. My stomach just decides that I'm giving birth to Satan. That's how it felt. I was growing baby Lucifer in my womb. The day before Machu Picchu. Are you kidding me? We're going tomorrow. And there's no way we could reschedule because we have a ticket that I spent money on. There's bus tickets. There, it's, it's a procedure, bitch. To get to Machu Picchu, it's a fucking procedure. Her dad, before we go to dinner, was like, we have Machu Picchu tomorrow. And I was like, Sammy, I know. And he was like, ah, me and Christelle's father, her sweet father father don't even know him that well he's like when was the last time you shat like when was the last time oh my god you guys with shame and disgust and frustration i had to look at christelle's dad in the eyes and say five days ago sir um the concern <laughs> on this man's face said it all. He goes, come with me, just come with me. And I'm like, okay, Christelle's father, getting very vulnerable with Christelle's dad. And I am following Christelle's father in an alleyway in Peru, cobblestone streets, llamas walking around, like literally holding my stomach in pain while I'm following her father down this tight alleyway at night. And Christelle's behind me, uncle's behind her. We're in a single file line. He walks into a store just abruptly and he looks at me and he goes, come here. And I'm like, okay. He leads us into a pharmacy and I was like, okay, true. I was like, what is he gonna get me? Maybe like some Advil. He goes up to the lady. Oh, apparently Sammy is telling this woman that I'm very constipated and I need something to relieve that. This lady says in Spanish, I guess like, how bad is it? And Sammy just looks at her in the eyes and goes, five days. And the lady literally looked at him and then looked at me and went, <gasps> okay. Hang on a second. And she goes into the back. 
And I was like, what was that about? She comes back with a bottle. It was like this green bottle. It just looked like a bottle of soju. I don't know how else to describe what it looked like. Oh, I have a picture of it. But apparently these were the best laxatives in town and it was liquid form and I don't even know. He gave it to me. The pharmacist like said something in Spanish to him and then he looked at me and translated it and was like, this is the this is the answer and i was like okay when christelle's uncle saw the pharmacist hand it to sammy he looked at me and he goes oh he didn't even know it was that bad yeah i guess it's that bad we have to have this i just trusted christelle's dad so we try to go to dinner christelle's dad suggests that i eat a soup like something light so i had this soup i'm almost done finishing the soup i'm like almost done with it and then right when i'm about to finish the soup i just get that Again, dude. Ugh. Like in the middle of the restaurant and I'm like literally bent over just trying not to cry, trying not to yell. And Christelle's dad's like, Christelle, you take Sarah back to the hotel room. Sarah, you're gonna chug that shit and wait 45 minutes. And at this point it's like 8 p.m. And I'm like, okay, sir. He's like, we're going to Machu Picchu tomorrow. And I was like, I know, sir, won't let you down. So we go back to the room. I'm like nervous. Cause I'm like, what the hell is this drink? What is it gonna do to me? Like, what's the vibe? So I drank that entire thing. Me and Christelle are just waiting, trying to scroll through TikTok, but me and her are just both in our separate beds, just like anticipating something. An hour goes by, she's like, how you feeling? I'm like, I feel nothing. Two hours goes by, how you feeling? I don't feel nothing. Three hours, meh nothing it's like midnight and we're tired and i was like damn dude even peru's strongest laxative did not work and me and her were just like damn that sucks well let's just try to get some sleep we had to be up at six in the morning so we could leave for machu picchu at seven so we go to bed and <laughs> what happens I fell asleep at midnight, woke up at two in the morning to Project X, hosted by Lucifer himself, in my womb. I, I literally shot up out of bed, like sat up straight. Like I was getting an exorcism, dude. I literally was like, oh my God, I thought I was levitating. I was like, oh my God, here she comes. Hey team, everybody, it's happening, it's happening. She's giving birth. I get up out of that bed so quickly and I sprint to the bathroom. Oh my God. This is gonna be TMI, but genuinely, this was my experience. This was my Peru experience. I'm not just gonna sugarcoat shit and say that Peru was so wonderful and smooth sailing for me. No, girl, no. I gave birth that night. Um, girl, it was World War Three. Bombs, explosions. Trauma. Ah! Rocking back and forth. Ah! Um, nightmarish. Remember when I said that I was giving birth to Lucifer himself? Oh yeah, he came out and I truly believe that that night I died and experienced hell. I don't know how anything else could come close to that. It was, it was humbling because I was, I was crying. I was shaking. I like just sobbing tears in this bathroom. At one point I had to like go like this so I couldn't scream. Like it truly felt like like a ketamine trip or something where I was like shooting into a, just a different dimension. And my body was just like readjusting all at once. And it was so painful, awful, 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 awful. I'm like, is this seriously what it's like to give birth? Because I don't want to. If this is what it's like, hey, I'll pass. Adoption sounds really sweet right now. Um, yeah borderline traumatizing but i don't want to give that the power you know i just didn't want it to be traumatizing so bad because i'm in peru you know i was really trying to keep my sh my keep my shit together truly literally i was just really <laughs> i was 
really just trying to enjoy every single part of this experience. And the fact that this was happening, it was just like, why? I was really trying not to let it bring me down, but also, <laughs> the empath in me. Like not only was I like screaming in the bathroom about giving birth to the devil, I was also feeling so bad for Christelle because what is her experience? Like what is her perspective? <laughs> She's right around the corner. She's not having a good time. We have to wake up in a few hours to hike Machu Picchu. She's obviously awake. Is she okay? Like I'm literally in the bathroom just like empathizing for Christelle. Like, I can't stop empathizing. Oh my god, I feel so bad for her. And I have nowhere to run, I have nowhere to hide. That was the most vulnerable I've ever been with anybody. Even with my ex of three years. Never got to that level with him. We've come close, but not like that. Not even with my mom. <laughs> Maybe. It was earth shattering and that lasted for a while. It was necessary. And the entire time I was thinking, damn, like Sammy really knew what he was doing by giving me that drink. So Christelle <laughs> was a very sweet angel. Didn't make me feel embarrassed about it. Hey, we're human beings, okay? Any of my potential crushes or anybody that has a crush on me, I'm sorry, we can try to get past this. I go back into the room after that experience. I don't even know how much time that was. Time stopped for me, time didn't exist. I was traveling through my past lives, my future lives. I was everywhere and I was nowhere all at once. But when that was finally over, I awkwardly hobble back into the room, <laughs> which is right around the corner. <laughs> Her bed was right next to the wall. I just kind of hobble around the corner and try to sneak back to my bed. I hope Christelle didn't hear that. <laughs> that was crazy. Let's uh, let's just go back to sleep, right guys? Christelle totally didn't hear that. So by the grace of God himself, I was able to fall asleep. I wake up to the sound of Christelle's alarm clock. This is the day. This is the day of our Peru trip that we've been waiting for. We are about to hike Machu Picchu, bitch. We're gonna remember this for the rest of our lives. And I hear her alarm. I'm like laying there and I'm like, okay, I hear that. I gotta hike Machu Picchu right now. After that spiritual ceremony I just went through in the bathroom a few hours ago. Am I okay? Not sure. I hear Christelle kind of like get up. She takes a shower. And while she's in the shower, I'm laying there still. I feel the pain come again, but it's not like the really intense random pains. It's like, I have to go again. Like this is round two, bitch. I heard Christelle turn the shower off and I was like, sir, just wait a few seconds. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Christelle gets out of the shower. I sprint by her. Move, bitch. I'm just like, oh my God, there is no way this is happening right now. We have to get on a bus and that bus ride was gonna be a few hours long. And I was just sitting in the bathroom being like, oh wow, what am I gonna do? Like, I am not okay. And then I go to get some toilet paper. There's none. There's none. There's none left. <laughs> of course there's not. And so I was like, oh my God, Christelle, there's like no toilet paper left. Could you like try to get some for me? I don't know where. She was like, I'm gonna go to my dad's room. And I was like, this is so embarrassing. Her dad and her uncle are in the next room. I hear her waddling over to the next room and I hear her knock on her dad's door. <laughs> and I'm literally just sitting in the bathroom like, <laughs> this is the worst. And then all I hear in the distance, it's like muffled. He goes, yeah. And she goes, do you have extra toilet paper? And Christelle's dad goes, oh my God. He goes with so much enthusiasm. Did Sarah deliver the baby? And then, I'm not even kidding y'all, I heard cheering. <laughs> I heard cheering and it was super encouraging. It was her dad and her uncle. And I was just sitting there being like, I really appreciate the positivity. 
Christelle comes back. She came back with a lot. So I was like, okay, period. But then after that, Christelle's like getting changed and getting her bag packed for Machu Picchu. And I am in so much pain still, even after that, I don't know what to do right now. And I was on the verge of tears because like, I just like didn't want to hold them back. They were so excited for this. So was I, but I was like, dude, if this is going to be me the entire time today, like I'm just going to be such a vibe kill. It's going to suck if I go. And she was like, just wait it out. Just wait it out. Maybe like 15 minutes. And I was like, okay, I just really don't think I can do this, which is crazy. Get your shit together and just just go anyway but oof this is like next level shit literally christelle was like okay so like what do you want to do and i was like i think that you just like have to call your dad and just tell him that i just can't go i i'm i'm just in so much pain like i'm just so sorry and christelle was like really sad but obviously she wanted me to do what was best for me she was like fuck okay like let me just call him and i'm just laying in the bed holding my stomach and christelle calls her dad next door she goes hey dad um yeah sarah I, she doesn't think that she can come Yeah, well, no, but she's like in so much pain, like her stuff. Um, okay. Okay, I'll tell, I'll tell her that. Okay, bye. So you're going, whether you like it or not. You not going basically is just not an option. And my dad is not allowing that, so get dressed because we're leaving in like 15 minutes um and i was like okay 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 mm -hmm. yeah no is not an option it's not it's just not i can so do this i can so do this